Welcome back again to the Christ Jesus College and Seminary in the Christ Jesus Chapel. And we welcome you with open arms. We are a global Christian community. We're in the United States, we're in Kenya, we're in India, we're in Cuba, we're in the Middle East. And wherever this internet may go, we know that the Holy Spirit is enabling us through His grace and through His power by the blood of Jesus to proclaim and publish the great name of Christ Jesus our Lord and what was done on the cross. So my question to you this morning is, are you ready to be blessed? Of course you are. So let's start here with this. We need a prelude. We need a prelude into this message of Jesus saves. Today's message is Jesus saves. Now, there was a time where the world was kind of stuck in time. We called it the dark ages. And then the printing press came. And then what took monks, you had monks that were literally writing all day long to get one book published. The printing press came along, and we were able now to print a book within an hour. That is definitely a milestone, a Rubicon in the history of the world. Think about the advent of trains. Before you couldn't go from point A to point B unless you were able to walk it or have a horse or a wagon. Now with a train, you were able to transcend time, so to speak. And that was another event that changed history. Then came the plane, making things faster, more convenient. Think about the radio and how that impacted the world and government and business and families and even the church. And then think for a moment how TV came, television, MTV. Yes, that even too changed all the dimensions of our life. We need to take very close notice here that the atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, that too had a rippling effect in history. But please take note that each of these events, including the advent of the internet, came at interspersed times in history, allowing the world to accommodate. You see where I'm going with this. Welcome to the New World Order. It was first called Agenda 2021, and now it's called Agenda 2030. And if you haven't read about it, it's public knowledge. You can go anywhere on the Internet and educate yourself as a Christian what is really going on, and how do these agendas affect us on the national, the national level, the state level, the county level, even the, the smallest town level, all these agendas are affecting each and every part of our lives. There's a convergence that's occurring we as Christians need to be aware of this convergence. You say, well, Brother Ramsey, what are you talking about? There is a convergence at this very time, this very moment. And we need to be completely awake and vibrant, not in slumber, but having drunk the, the wonderful Java of the Holy Spirit and be fully alert that you have transhumanism. There's nanotechnology. If you don't know what nanotechnology is, my friends, you have a lot of homework on your own. All I can do is point in the right direction. A good teacher points in the right direction, and then it's your responsibility to do the homework. There has been great experimentation in transhumanism. There's been great experimentation globally with nanotechnology. And if you don't understand anything about what's going on truly with genetic engineering today, it's exactly what Jesus said. 
that his returns would be just like the days of Noah. As if that isn't enough in the convergence. We have robotics mingled with artificial intelligence. Nobody knows the outcome of this. And then we have digital currency. A global digital currency. You'll say, well, how can that be possible? Well, my friends, when you have a world that, 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 that just ex experienced a worldwide pandemic, yet unexplained, hint, hint, wink, wink, and we are at a we are literally in a in a world that is at war, and yet we don't want to admit it. And when we had had a time period where we had global, not national, global lockdowns, which literally bankrupt nation states all over the world. There are only nine countries in the world that don't have centralized banks. These centralized banks are part of a larger scheme. And one day, they're expecting, you know, more pandemics. They're expecting more lockdowns. I'm sure you're, you are fully aware of the global digital vaccine and health certificate treaty that was signed three to four weeks ago with the help of the United Nations the infamous World Health, World Health Organization, and 51 countries around the world. No, my friends, there is no time date that it will start. It started already. And so where are we as Christians? Why are you here today? You are alive today only for one reason. If God has given you the grace to be alive, to be breathing, it's because God wants you to share the gospel with somebody else. Nothing else. Nothing more. My great concern. My heartfelt concern. For all believers. Here in the United States. North America. Europe. Africa. Asia. Around the world. Is are we really truly. Prepared. Because we're going to be challenged severely. Are you listening to me? We're going to be challenged severely on one very vital and critical point. We're going to be asked, why do you believe in the Bible? Why do you trust in the Bible? Why do you believe that Jesus is the Christ? And you're going to have to have an answer because there's going to be ramifications beyond your most wild imagination. You know, many people believe, as Christians, that there's going to be the great escape. There's going to be a first-class ticket, and that before all, or any before all and any tribulations come, we're going to have a first-class ticket into paradise, and we're going to escape everything, and we're not going to experience all of this. What does Paul say? Paul is very clear. Until we eyewitness the great apostasy, the great falling away. Many people say that the, the, the great apostasy started in the 40s and 50s. Many people are saying it's occurring right now. I personally believe it's going to happen even more so than you than we think. But until we see the great apostasy, the great falling away of Christians turning their backs away from Christ, and we will see with our own eyeballs the man of lawlessness. We will see the man of perdition. We will see the Antichrist, not the one who is against Christ, but the one who is trying to make himself like Christ to the rest of the world. Are you with me? You know, we've spent millions and billions of dollars trying to, scientists and world countries and, and, and community have tried to seek a, an opportunity to get a message from outer space. When already we can say as Christians, this, this is the message that you should be giving to everyone that's around you. 
your wife, your husband, your children, neighbors, friends, co-workers, and yes, your enemies, that the Bible is an extraterrestrial message. I'm going to repeat that. The Bible is an extraterrestrial message that has been authenticated. That's right. 66 books. The Bible is 66 books written by 40 writers over a period of 2,000 years. It's an integrated message. Every single part of this Bible interrelates with each other. The origins of this extraterrestrial message that has been authenticated. The origins come outside from the domain and dimension of time. God, as we learn in the book of Isaiah, is not bound by time. There is no past, present, and future for God. Yahweh lives in eternity. The Bible describes yesterday, tomorrow, and more importantly, he describes today. I find it so amazing that God enters time to write history before it happens. Do you hear what I just said? God enters time to write history before it happens. What is it called? It's called prophecy. For us fancy theologians, we call it eschatology. Unfortunately, there are not many eschatologists out there. They're studying geopolitical events. My concern is as Christians, are we really prepared for this global convergence? It's going to happen on a level far more than we ever imagined. On a geopolitical, financial, personal, medical spiritual level it's going to penetrate the veil of all our defenses and all we're going to have is our bible the whole armor of god and the holy spirit let me just make mention here about this this point about prophecy you need to be bold as a christian and explain to everyone that you know that the Bible is an extraterrestrial message from God that has been authenticated and that there are no other books in, the, in, in anywhere in the world, in the history of the world, that has prophecy. The Bible is the only book that has 100% time-proven, accurate prophecies. I'm not here to offend anyone, but as a professor of religious philosophy, I will tell you very point-blank range that the Islamic Quran does not have any prophecy. Zero. The Hindu Veda, one of the oldest religious cultures, has zero prophecy. The, ba the Bhagavad Gita has zero prophecy. The Book of Mormon has zero prophecy. <laughs> Many people spend time reading these lyrics from Nostradamus. Why waste your time? And then there's the more nefarious occult, witchcraft, and sorcery, which we're seeing more and more in our world today, especially in the world of entertainment and education and literature. And do not underestimate the New Age Spirit Movement. Very frightening. Paul said, he warned Timothy and said, there'll come a time where the church, the church itself will not be able to endure sound doctrine that there's going to be a seducing doctrine of demons. That's right, you heard it from me. This is the raw and filtered channel. It's called the great delusion. 
And it's going to occur when there's the great convergence. And my friends, it's not 10 years from now. It's months from now, maybe years. But I do believe it's going to happen a lot sooner than we anticipate. And until we really believe that every book of the Bible is, is a perfect design and it's integrated into each other, then we're not going to fully appreciate what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to 18. What did he say? He said, don't think for a moment that I came here to destroy the law. No, my friends. I came outside of time to enter time to fulfill the law. And what did he say? Not one jot or tittle would be in any way ignored. He said, heaven and earth will pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but every jot and tittle in the Bible, that means every comma and every dot of every I in the holy scriptures of the Bible will come to fulfillment. That means, my friend, that every chapter of the Bible has a message. Every sentence has a message. Every word has a message. There are hidden meanings behind every symbol and detail in the Bible. And when we have confidence as Christians in our Bibles, then we're going to change the world. Now, I'm going to provide to you in the few remaining moments two examples. You need to feel free to study these on your own and then make them your own and find others in the Bible so that you can have the extreme confidence to tell others my friends, this Bible, this extraterrestrial Bible, this message from heaven itself has so many wonderful messages. Let me give you an example. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 5. Now, most people love Genesis chapter 1, 2, 3, and 4, filled with a lot of drama and adventure. And then they skip chapter 5 because it's a genealogy. Who wants to read a genealogy? And then chapter 6, you've got the giants and the angels and beautiful women and, 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 and the beginning of the story of Noah. Most Christians, I can tell you, as, as, a, as having run the Bible college and seminary since 2008, most scholars will admit, I skip reading chapter 5, Genesis 5. What is Genesis, what is Genesis chapter 5? It's a genealogy. This father gave had this son, and this son had another son. It's a genealogy. It's a genealogy of 10 men. Now, why would God Almighty, why would Abba Father have Moses take the time to write down this genealogy in Genesis chapter 5? Let's look at the names here. Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan. Now, many modern translations, so-called transliterations are wrong. It's not Canaan, it's Kenan. Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. Now, why? My friends, until you learn that every single thing in the Bible has a meaning for you, every single thing in the Bible is a gift to you, every single thing in the Bible is a weapon for you, because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You need to be confident in your Bible, and you need... To have the Bible abiding and dwelling in you, or you will not be prepared for this convergence. Let's go through the meanings very quickly. Adam comes from the word Odama, which means man. Seth means appointed. Enosh comes from Anash, which means mortal. Kenan means sorrow. Mahalel is a, is a very interesting name. Has two roots. Means blessed. And the, word, and the word El means God. 
Jared means shall come down. Enoch means teaching. Methuselah, the flood did not start until Methuselah died. Very interesting root word. Muth means death. Shalak means to bring. Lamak means to be despairing, full of despair. And what does Noah mean? Comfort and rest. So say, Brother Ramsey, thanks so much for letting us know what the meanings of the words are. My friend, there's a message here in Genesis chapter 5. Let's take the meaning of each of these words and put them all together, and you'll see that there's a sermon. You will find that the gospel has been integrated as early as Genesis chapter 5. Using the ten names of the men, here is the message. Adam, man is. Seth, man is appointed. Adam, Seth, Anosh, man is appointed to mortality. Kenan, man is appointed unto mortal sorrow. But Mahalalel, the blessed God, Jared, will come down. Enoch, teaching Methuselah that his death shall bring Lamech, the despairing Noah, comfort and rest. Can I get a hallelujah here? Can, can anyone give me a hallelujah here? We have, just, we have just read the gospel. Man is appointed to mortal sorrow, but the blessed God will come down himself, teaching that his death shall bring the despairing comfort and rest. How that got tucked away in Genesis Genesis 5, unbelievable. I'm going to give you another, another final example of the power and majesty that you have at your fingertips with the Bible. It's never been easier to read the Bible and study the Bible with a concordance, an interlinear Bible. You've got the Blue Letter Bible. There are so many resources that there is no excuse for any Christian not to be fully equipped in the Word of God. So who was this person that came down? Who was this person who came down? Our Lord Jesus. And what was the message? Did you know that God wrote a love letter? Do you know that God wrote a love poem? Well, what kind of ink did he use? He used the blood of Jesus. God wrote a love letter. God wrote a love poem in the blood of Jesus on a wooden cross outside of Jerusalem. Our enemies have been defeated, and everything that's going to happen in the future has been precast, predestined, all because of this one event that happened outside of Jerusalem with Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I'm going to ask you a question. If I were to ask you to write 11 sentences, but these are going to be the grammatical rules you're going to have to follow, please let me know in your comments if you could do this. You would have to write 11 sentences that would really have amazing mathematical geometry. Here are the rules. The number of words in these 11 sentences, if they're divided by 7, will give you an even number. It means the remainder is 0. The number of words in these 11 sentences divided by 7 gives you an even number. The number of letters in the 11 sentences divided by 7 is an even number. The number of vowels divided by 7 is an even number. The number of consonants divided by 7 is an even number. Every word that begins with a vowel divided by seven gives you an even number, zero remainder. Every letter that starts with a consonant divided by seven will give you an even number. Even words that only occur more than once divided by seven 
will give you an even number. Now, the, there are seven words that are not going to be nouns. And only be, there's only going to be seven kinds of nouns. And then final, the number of nouns divided by seven will be an even number. The number of names in these 11 sentences is going to be an even number. The number of males divided by seven will be an even number. And the number of generations divided by seven will give you an even number. You will, say, well, you'll be saying to me, that's impossible. I can't write 11 sentences. Let me just say this in closing. There is a very, I pray for this person. He is supposedly a professor of, of history in, in Israel. He is a very militant atheist. He's a, he adheres to homosexuality. And he believes that the Bible is fiction. He believes the Bible is fiction. It's a compilation of human fictional stories. And he's waiting, looking forward to the perfection of artificial intelligence to write us the perfect Bible and create a new religion, a religion that is not written by human men. And can you believe that his book, you have 47 million people that are buying this book. Can you understand how lost the world is? Well, I'm here to disprove, and I challenge this professor to any debate, any time, any place in the world, at any time, because these 11 sentences occur in Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 to 11, and it is the genealogy of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Do you see the perfection of the Bible? So my question to you in closing is, what is your readiness for this convergence? Are you ready? Is your family ready? Is your church ready? Being a sincere Christian in a good Bible-believing church is not enough. So what? That's not going to save you from this convergence. Here's the challenge, my friend. I'm going to be very blunt and very direct with you. Unless you make it your business to really know your Bible. You need to really emphasize this with your children, with your spouse, with your friends, with your Christian brothers and sisters. You really need to memorize the Bible. You need to know the Bible. You're going to be challenged severely why you believe Jesus Christ is Lord. And besides knowing the Bible... You're going to have to know for sure what is your spiritual gift. You may have one gift, you may have several gifts, but you're going to have to know for sure, and you're going to have to know for sure what is the good and perfect will of God in your life. And lastly, you're going to have to get her done. You're going to have to do it. That is the only way you're going to be able to meet this convergence. Now, I've given you two examples of the perfection of the Word of God. I've given you a synoptic view of what's happening right now as the world prepares for another pandemic and for future lockdowns. So are you ready? My friends, only you can answer that question. And it's my prayer that you will accept this challenge to know your Bible, to know your gifts, And to number your days and apply your hearts to wisdom. Peace and joy. You know that I love you, but he loves us the most. So stand firm and wear the whole armor. Not just some of it. Not the, not the parts that you just love. Wear the whole armor of God. God bless.